During the Second World War, there were a number of horrific female concentration camp guards who at the end of the conflict executed for their crimes. One of the most fearsome women to go to the hangman's gallows was Irma Grazer, who was 22 years old when she was executed, and she was known as the Hyena of Auschwitz, or the Beautiful Beast. Grazer was a woman who encouraged her dog to attack other prisoners, and she also shot inmates who were not working hard enough. But following her execution, a dark cloud emerged in the decades after she was actually exhumed from her grave, and she was buried in other places, and the authorities opened her grave and removed her body. Irma Grazer was a young girl, desperate to be allowed to join the Nazi youth groups for women, and she even came into conflict with her father because of this. She, at the age of 14, left her father's home and worked as a farm worker for six months before she then tried to study in 1939 as a nurse inside of an SS hospital. She rubbed shoulders with a number of horrific Nazis. However, she was not said to have been a good enough nurse and was let go. But she was recommended to go and work inside of the concentration camps. And six months later, when she was 18, she became a female guard inside of the all-female camp in Ravensbrück. At the time, she passed a number of exams and Grazer became one of thousands of women who served as guards inside of the concentration camps and she was forced to become a monster. On her first day, Grazer actually was noted apologising to an inmate, but then she was lambasted for this and she became a woman who would learn to treat prisoners with evil and horror. Like many other guards, she was transferred to Auschwitz as the camp expanded to a huge extent. Grazer became a guard inside of the women's camp of Auschwitz-Birkenau, the main extermination centre, where the gas chambers were found. For her work, she oversaw the gardening group of workers and also worked in the post room and in the telephone exchanges. However, she and the May of 1944 became an Oberauschwierin, a senior guard, and she was overseeing around 30,000 women prisoners inside of Birkenau. She became a beast and she was terribly brutal, and she wore very heavy boots and would carry her pistol and whip with her. A former doctor claimed about her that she was the most beautiful woman I have ever seen. Her face has an angelic clarity, and her blue eyes were the liveliest and most innocent eyes imaginable. Another prisoner said, It defied belief that such a pretty girl could be so cruel. When she walked through the camp with a whip in her hand, she was surrounded by a cloud of choice perfume. She would attack the women using this whip, and sometimes would beat them to death. Grazer was obsessed to witness the medical experiments of Auschwitz, and her sadistic belief was evident when she saw these. One former doctor said, Irma Grazer invariably arrived to watch the operation, kicking the victim if her screams interfered with her pleasure and giving herself completely to the spasms which shook her entire body and made saliva run down from the corners of her mouth. She was obsessed with death, and she attacked prisoners and she encouraged her dog to maul inmates. One witness said of her actions that we were loading the lorries. Before noon, we had an unexpected visitor. Auschwerin Irma, with her two leashed dogs, Frau Auschwerin Irma, blonde, with an angel face and snake eyes, the camp's chief torturer. We were very careful not to attract her attention. We pushed and pushed. It seemed to take an eternity to roll the car over the hill. The next team was unable to coordinate its efforts. They were completely unnerved by our visitor. They hesitated and lost control of their wagon. It swayed, bowed down the hill, capsized, scattering stones over the whole area. The prisoners were completely broken in spirit. Auschwer in Irma siced the two police dogs on them. The girls tried to escape their fangs, but the trained killers easily overtook them. One grabbed a Polish woman who slipped on a rock. The other fell upon a Russian girl. At Irma's orders... The Capus underlings beat and kicked the girls still untouched by the dogs. The Capo, an inmate overseer, wrote down the numbers of the delinquent team. The dogs were tearing at the girls' bodies. Irma came closer to observe what they were doing. Her eyes were bloodshot. 
The sight of the blood seemed to intoxicate her. She panted. She was excited. Everybody could see that. We stood in a trance, as at a gladiatorial combat. But Irma Grazer also got involved in the selections of prisoners, and she was seen sending thousands of children, men and women to their exterminations inside of the gas chambers. She would choose those who would die that day alongside other SS guards such as Josef Mengel, the Angel of Death, who Gerza allegedly had an affair with. As the Second World War continued, Grazer was then moved from Auschwitz to Bergen-Belsen and she oversaw the hugely overcrowded camp and the site of Belsen fell into a sorry state. She remained at the camp when many SS guards decided to leave to try and save themselves and many of her friends, such as the Commandant Josef Kranmer, continued to try to keep law and order at the site but as the Allies arrived they found themselves as prisoners on death's door and they also found 10,000 corpses lying around the site. But Irma Grazer was then arrested, and she was brought to trial at the Belson trials, and was accused of execution, slaughter, barbarism, and the selections of Auschwitz, and was tried with crimes against humanity. After a nine-week court proceedings and trial, she was sentenced to death for her crimes alongside two other women, Elizabeth Volkenrath, and Joanna Bormann, inside of Hamline Prison, alongside a number of other condemned guards, Irma Grazer waited for her execution. Inside an execution gallows had been made, and the night before her date with the executioner, Grazer sung Nazi songs long into the early morning on the 13th of December 1945. Grazer was to be executed in the first batch of prisoners, and it was said of her execution that we climbed the stairs to the cells where the condemned were waiting. A German officer at the door leading to the corridor flung open the door and we filed past the rows of faces and into the execution chamber. The officers stood at attention. Brigadier Patton Walsh stood with his wristwatch raised. He gave me the signal and a sigh of released breath was audible in the chamber. I walked into the corridor. Irma Grazer, I... The German guards quickly closed all grills on twelve of the inspection holes and opened one door. Irma Grazer stepped out. The cell was far too small for me to go inside, and I had to pinion her in the corridor. Follow me, I said in English, and O'Neill repeated the order in German. At 9.34am, she walked into the execution chamber, gazed for a moment at the official standing round it, then walked on to the centre of the trap, where I had made a chalk mark. She stood on this mark very firmly, and as I placed the white cap over her head, she said in her languid voice, Schnell. The English translation is quickly. The drop crashed down, and the doctor followed me into the pit and pronounced her dead. After twenty minutes, the body was taken down and placed in a coffin, ready for burial. However, this was not the end, as Irma Grazer would be, in the years later, exhumed. She was buried quickly alongside the other SS guards who were executed inside of the prison yard of Hamlin. This was close to the execution chamber, and the prison at the time was under British control. But then as the years rolled on, the prison was to be returned to the Germans, and there was a lot of issues regarding right-wing problems inside German society, and some of these groups wanted to venerate the SS guards as heroes. But in the March of 1954, it was decided to exhume the bodies of the executed guards from the prison yard, and the authorities broke the ground, and then discovered the graves and remains of Irma Grazer. They were identified, and her corpse was placed in a separate new coffin, and it was then prepared to be buried elsewhere. 91 bodies in total were dug up, and they were buried inside of the nearby cemetery, Hamlin am Welsh. This cemetery was not to hold memorials for the evil guards such as Grazer, who were interred, and a newspaper article said of the exhumation and reburials that British occupation authorities refused to interfere with German authorities who moved the bodies from a mass grave to individual plots in the city cemetery. After a campaign by neo-Nazi elements in Hamlin, Lower Saxony, 
30 of the 90 bodies of the executed Nazi war criminals have already been moved from a common mass grave near Hamlin and reinterred in the city cemetery. The remaining bodies will be moved later. Among these reburied are Josef Kramer, named the Beast of Belsen by inmates of the notorious death camp, and Irma Grazer, who hounded women prisoners at Belsen. But Irma Grazer's executed body had been dug up inside of the prison and then taken out of the prison walls to be placed in a new ground inside of an established cemetery. As the years rolled on, a number of Nazi groups visited the grave site and even held rallies as she was buried next to other prominent guards such as Josef Kranmer and Elizabeth Volkenrath and other condemned guards of Bergen-Belsen. There are even wooden crosses placed to make it more of a memorial site, but these have been removed and today the burial site of Irma Grazer is just a grass field. Grazer was a horrific female SS concentration camp guard who was known for her murderous actions and brutality. She would meet her end inside of the execution chamber of Hamlin Prison and a lot is known about how evil she was, but the exhumation and reburial of her is not too well known at all. Thank you for watching and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.